the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast. I'm Cece, also known as Java Pearl. I'm Damaris, also known as Damaris Stash, a bit weird. And we're glad to have you today. Today is Wednesday, the 14th of October, 2015. You know what that means? What? Your birthday was yesterday. Yes. Happy birthday. And this is episode 162. We are very glad to have you. Um, we'd like to say a big welcome back to our returning viewers. We love you guys. And a big hi out to any new viewers. Thanks for giving us a shot. We hope you enjoy the show. Uh, Mayor, we had some people introduce themselves in our Ravelry group this week, so why don't you give them a shout out? Okay. Kathy, who is C. Jernst Tribe 5 from North Carolina. And Lori, who is L. Clark 101896 from Illinois. Hi. Welcome. Thanks for introducing yourself. So, Mayor, if somebody's not a member of our group, what should they do and why? Join. Because if you do, you'll, you, you, you. <laughs> what do they should they do after they join? Introduce yourself in our introductions thread, and you'll get a shout out on our next episode. And since you'll be a member of the group, you'll be able to participate in cows and giveaways. Yes. Well, we have a lot to talk about this week because you have a lot of birthday stuff to show us. Yes. Yes. Um, so we should probably get started. So here we go. <laughs> And now we're going to talk about what's on our needles. So we have a couple of projects that we're working on together. Yes. So they are both baby blankets. Um, the first one is the Doctor Who Baby Blanket Take Two, and it incorporates um, dishcloths by Holy Nart, who is Lindsay. We're on US 6's 4 mil needles, and right now we're using West Yorkshire Spinners Air Valley DK in the white, gray, and blue colorway. So um, I took over for Damaris. She had done um, about a third of the, this second row. And so I finished those off. So this one is Bad Wolf. The middle one is the Angels Take the Phone Box. And the last one is Jelly Baby. And then I've just started the next row, which is, I don't remember what they are. Let us look in the handy dandy pattern thing. Lote Saxon, the Doctor Who logo, and canine. So I am working on those. There's five rows of three squares total. Um, so those are in progress, and then they will have a Doctor Who scarf around the outside edges. I have the yarn all tangled now. That's not good. Um, so that's this baby blanket. Do you want to talk about the other one, babe? Um, the other one is called Fly Away with the Doctor, and it's the Fly Away Pattern by Tin Can Knits. Yes, which is a fabulous pattern. It's on US 7s, 4.5 millimeters, and this is West Yorkshire Spares Air Valley... Erin. Erin, in the light brown and rust colorways. So this is one that you finished. Yeah, I knit that one. And I started... One. So you're almost a halfway because you just need to do this the ridges of the contrasting color. Uh oh, I just nipped my stitch marker into my sock. So how many did that make that are finished now? I'm looking for the card that is in here. That's not it. There it is. So three, four, five, six. So that's seven done, and you're working on number eight out of sixteen. So once you finish that one, we will be halfway done. Oh. And then there's just a small edging around the whole thing after they get seamed together. So we are working on that still. Um, all right, Mayor, what are you working on? Um, I'm working uh, still on some secret pumpkin spice socks, which are in this bag. And I'm using US 1.5, 2.5 millimeters, and it's rainbow heirloom yarn. And y'all, she finished knitting the first one. It's across the room over there, and it's gorgeous 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 love it and so now you're knitting the second one in the hopes that we can have a photo shoot on friday yes so you are knitting furiously so um but they look really really good so i'm very excited um the kits what's today the 14th the kits will ship out no later than the end of next week mm -hmm. um i just got in some more of the goodies today. I'm picking up the yarn on Monday. The project bags will be here the in, uh, at the weekend or on Monday. And the other goodies that I'm waiting on 
cleared customs yesterday. So hopefully maybe tomorrow or the next day they'll get here. So, and then we've just got to madly put everything together. Um, I, I'm doing, I've done as much of the work ahead of time as I can. So the labels and the custom decorations and all that so that hopefully we can just do a assembly line and. Yes, so what are you working on? Sorry, I got distracted by the pumpkin socks because they're so exciting. Um, and then uh, one, one more thing before I say what I'm working on. I haven't decided what date the pattern will go on sale individually because I kind of want to wait for as many of the kit people to receive theirs. So, because I would normally put it on sale like a week later, but that's like right in the middle of the retreat. So I'm still pondering that. So I'll get back to you on that. Okay, what I'm knitting on is my zigzag blanket. Um, this is the Teen Stitch Zigzag Pattern by Frankie Brown. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. And right now I am using Mint Rain Hand Dyed Yarn in her Tough Sock Base in the Trick or Treat colorway. Because, hello, Halloween. So it's orange and black. So um, what I've done is I finished the previous stripe. Hold on, I'm trying to find where I am. Here we go. So I was right here on the, um, what was it, silver lining? But I ran out, so I had to use West Yorkshire Spinner's Signature 4 ply in the... I think it's just gray. No, it's a spice name. I don't know. I can't remember. To finish that off, but I think it's fine, don't you? And then this, the one I'm doing now is self-striping, but since I'm doing such narrow knitting, it's making it long repeats of color. So... I finished off the last one, two, three zigzags, and then I've done one, two, three, four, five zigzags of the new color. So I am making progress on that. That will get set aside during the retreat, um, and then I'll pick it back up after the retreat is over. And then the only other thing I'm working on is I'm trying to finish um, birthday socks for my friend Katie. Um, her birthday is the day before the retreat starts. <laughs> so um, I'm using my free CC's Vanilla Cappuccino Socks pattern. You can sign up for my newsletter on Ravelry and receive it. I'm on US 1.5, 2.5 mil needles, and I'm using Knit Pick Stroll in the Cupcake Multicolor Way. So I finished the first sock with my short row heel, modified short row heel using Shadow Wrap. So that one's done, and I... I'm on, working on the second one. Let me see if I can get it to lay halfway flat. There we go. So I'm working on this one. I think I have about 20 more rows till I do the heel. Let's see if I can line it up and see. I should line it up on this side. Yeah, so probably about 20 rows till I'm ready for the heel. So I am making progress on that. And that's the only things I'm working on just so I can get these done before her birthday. And then I can't decide if I'm going to go back and do my other Sparkalicious sock or if I'm going to cast on my Halloween socks. I might cast those on. So that's everything that I'm working on. Anything else for you? No. All right, let's move on to the next segment. And now we're going to talk about her finished projects. And it's all about hats. So first up is my preview hat for the week. This is number 41 for the year from my free top-down preview hat pattern on Ravelry. I did this on US 6 4 mil needles and the multicolored is Westshire Shire Spinner's Air Valley DK in the rainbow colorway. And then I'm not sure what the red is. It's just an unknown yarn with a cute little pom-pom on top. So that's number 41. And then last week I showed y'all that I had finished the fourth Bumble hat, which is a pattern Bumble by Tin Can Knits. It's on US 5 3.75 mil needles and US 10.5 6.5 mil needles. And I was using Brigantia Luxury Yarn Erin in the Chartreuse colorway and Red Heart Super Saver in the gray Heather colorway. So I did hat number five this past week too, and it's for brothers but I didn't know how much yarn I was going to have left, so I didn't want to do the pom-pom on number four until I knit number five. So here they both are finished with pom-poms. 
So this is for, this one's going to be a smidge big on um, the little one, but he's going to turn one just after the first of the year. And I was afraid the baby one would be too small. So I went ahead and did the toddler and then I did the child one. And I love how different they look just because of doing the cuff and the pom-poms in different colors. It makes different colors stand out. So these are really, really cute. I love how they turned out and I'm done with them for now because he, the, this made five that I knit. So, um, but it's a great, great pattern. Highly recommend it. Um, you can make it look different by doing um, thicker stripes of color. So you could do two rows of each color or you could just use one solid color or you could use a variegated. Um, and you can also turn it inside out to make it look like this, which I really like, other than you can see where I carried the yarn. So, um, so there's some options on that. So, but I really, really like how they turned out. So give those to the brothers and they will love them, I'm sure. I know their mama will love them because I was putting pom-poms on them. So, and that's everything I finished this week. Um, well, we have a lot to talk about in Yummies with your birthday. Oh, apologies if there's any sniffling during the episode. Damaris' allergies are driving her mad. Yep, so apologies. Thanks for understanding. Okay, let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for our favorite part of the show. Yummies! So what are yummies, Mare? Yummies are our current favorite things, things we like, things we want to talk to you about. Yummies. And Mare, you are now officially 16 years old. Yes. As of 9, 12 p.m. UK time. Because you were born at 3, 12 p.m. Central time. Mm -hmm. So you are now 16. Yes. And you, how do you feel about this? I'm a legal adult here now, aren't I? Yeah. That's I don't think, funny. I don't, That's I, funny. I don't know how I feel about that. How do, yeah, how do you feel about the fact that I'm a legal adult? That might have to be our title in which Damaris is a legal adult. I think it's hilarious. What are you going to go do with your legality? I don't know. Try to take was, over was the I, world? Was I illegal before? <laughs> Isn't there a song about that? I don't know. But yes. Yes. Okay, but so you had lots of birthday fun this week. Yes. Yes. So do you want to share some of your birthday fun with us? Yes. So let's start with these. You and... Daddy. I can't say the hubs. No. My the hubs. Her daddy. Yes. Got me these cat brooches. So there's this one. And that's the name of the cat in the box. Mor Morg? I, I can't make her face. <laughs> Mifonwi? Oh. That's how I would say it. Mifonwi. Lovey. And cheeky. So what are you going to do with these? Are you going to like just wear them on different days a bit to express how you feel? I don't know. Or put them on a bag or... I don't know. I thought they were adorable I, when I found them. I was like, okay, Damaris needs those. Yes. yes. All right, what else do you got? You also got me these. Yes. These are stickers from Karen Hallian. On Can I stop? Let me stop you for just a second. The cat brooches came from Wonky Dragon on Etsy. I'll link it all in the show notes. I, we just, I didn't, you didn't say that, so I just um, wanted to tell them. These are from Karen Hallian on Etsy. Yeah. Hold them closer. Oh, you've got that one turned sideways. There you go. So, Tardis Little Mermaid. You have that shirt. Mm -hmm. And then Peggy Carter, I Know My Value, and then um, Kaylee from Firefly, yes. who was in... What was she in that I watched this week? Supernatural. Supernatural. You know what her character's name was? What? Amy Pond. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And then you also got me these from Karen Hallian. So, I know my value. I can't remember what it says underneath. I can't read it. 
I was trying to read what it says oh. underneath. Anyone else's opinion doesn't really matter. That one. I couldn't read the small print. Okay, this one. Captain America. Yes. I thought that was precious. Yes. So those all came from Karen Halley and on Etsy. Yes. You also got me this. It just came in the post today. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> So this is a project bag by Knit Run Dig. Kitties, and there's a kitty. You have to hold it close. That's kitties inside too. Aren't those fun? So I, I did this size for her because it's going to be for her Hexapuffs blanket once she starts sewing it together. Mm-hmm. Because that'll be the perfect size for it. Yes. Yes. All right, what else you got? Um, I got a bunch of cards. Okay. So, a kitty. That one's so cute. A very, very glittery one. And it's not for me! No. <laughs> no. It's actually for my parents. <laughs> this one that my friend painted. It's a Captain Pusha reference. Yep. And then this one from you. It's as big as my head. <laughs> Make her stop. Look, well, and... Oh. Oh, you, yeah, you haven't shown that yet. Oh, it's... But do you see all the writing? Oh, you can't read it because it's pink. <laughs> yeah. We wrote long notes to you. Yes. And you also got me this. Can you read it? I don't remember what it says. This entitles you to one sweater quantity of yarn. Yes. So she has to pick her sweater and then we'll find yarn for her. Yes. And I got a Amazon gift card. Which you're going to use for what? Night Vale, the audiobook and the Kindle edition when it comes out next week. Next week, yeah. And then my friends made me t-shirts. So the one who painted the card made me this cabin pressure t-shirt. It's so cute. And if I remember, I'll put a picture of the back end. It says the lemon is in play. Yes, and look at them. They're so cute. I know, they're adorable. Very, very cute. And then my other friend made me this one. Okay, you need to explain the reference for those who don't get it. It says 24601. Uh, it it's a reference to Les Mis, because that's Valjean's prison number. And on the back, it says... Leave the France, and the sleeves says JV or Jean Valjean. Oh yeah. And for everybody who was commenting about the picture from your party on Friday, where it looked like you all of a sudden had a tattoo, mm -hmm. it was just eyeliner. But no, no one was commenting on that. No one commented on that. Yes, there were several people that commented on mine. Oh, I didn't see those. Yeah, like, what is that on her? What is it? I hope it's temporary. And things like that. Yes, it was eyeliner. It was a, um... What's the name of the thing? Fleur de Lis. Fleur de Lis, that's right. Yes, I asked my friend to give me the Rami and Caramel Valjean brand. <laughs> yes. Yes. Is that everything physically here that you got? Yes. Okay, but then you got something else. Yes, I got a pattern on Ravelry from A. Bingham, who is Amy, and I got the Iron Man gauntlets pattern. And I have, I've got a picture from the, the, so the pattern page to put really on the screen. Cool. So those are really cool. So thank you. And thank you to everyone who wished me happy birthday. Yeah. You, you had a good one. Yes. We had cupcakes. Because mm -hmm. you'd already had cake and brownies. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, okay. Well, there was a new Sherlock trailer this week. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. It's really exciting um, coming at Christmas. So I've put it in the show notes um, so that you can watch it in case you haven't seen it. And then I also got a belated birthday thing from my friend Amy, who is Amy's Not Dead Yet on Etsy. We've shown you lots of her stuff before. We gave her, we gave away some. So she gave me this birthday card, that, which is the Tim's Doctor saying, You've survived another year of wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff. Happy birthday. And then inside of it, there were several things. This beautiful night cityscape bookmark. And don't blink, okay? Don't blink. It's a leafy angel. Don't blink. Don't blink. Okay. 
And here is 11 with the TARDIS. And here is Sherlock and the Hedgehog, which I have the big print, the big card of it on my wall. And then this is one of her Christmas things. It's a gift tag. I'll show you in just a second. And it's Sherlock and it says, deducing the perfect gift is hardly a challenge worthy of my intellect, but I made an exception for you. And then the last one is says, I would plant this acorn in your name, but I'd rather grow old with you. How sweet is that? So all that came from Amy. So thank you so much, Amy, for that. <sighs> Anything else? I don't think so. That was a lot of stuff. Um, so why don't we talk about hashtag GGK Crafty Pad. What is it, Mare? Um, it stands for Geeky Girls Knit Crafty Photo a Day Challenge. And we have a list of prompts for each month. And you take a picture related to the prompt for that day. And you post it anywhere you like. But we pick our favorites from Instagram. That's right. So, um, yeah. October. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Today is, I love this. Yes. Um, is the prompt. Um, I don't know. My brain is like. Uh, if I did, if it, I would be lost if it wasn't for my bullet journal. <laughs> okay, so what are we going to show them? Two photos from us that we liked and five photos from other people that we liked. So here come the photos. Alright, so let's talk about our only current upcoming event, which is... The Geeky Puffin Nipalooza, which is a retreat you and I and our friend Sam are hosting here in Edinburgh from Thursday the 29th of October to Sunday the 1st of November. That means it starts two weeks from tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So we are getting tons of stuff still in the post. I, I think the postman was kind of overwhelmed this morning when he arrived because... Mm -hmm. It was stacks of stuff. In fact, there's a whole stack of stuff sitting over here. We're picking up all of the exclusive yarn on Monday. Um, that's going to be a lot of yarn. Because we're picking up the pumpkin spice yarn in the same day. Yep. That's going to be a lot of yarn. We're taking the hubs with us to help. Um, we do have classes still available if you're interested in attending. Um, you can sign up on the website. And the vendor market will be open to the public on Saturday the 31st of October from 1 to 3 p.m. at the Gillis Center here in um, Edinburgh. The uh, details are on the website. Um, and we still have room if you would like to come. We'd be glad to have you. So where can they find out and sign up and all that stuff? GeekyPuffinNipalooza.com That's right. All right, well, I know we've watched a ton of TV, t TV this week, so we probably should move on to the next segment. And now we're going to talk about what we're reading and watching, because we didn't really listen to anything this week. Well, you've been listening well, to music. I, I listened to the Hamilton soundtrack on repeat for like the whole week, but that's about it. And when she's not listening to it, she's singing it. Yes. I, and sometimes I get confused and sing Liam his lyrics to the tune of Hamilton songs, or Hamilton lyrics to the tune of Liam his songs. And you and your friends that came over on Friday night for the sleepover had a Liam is karaoke. Yeah. Although some of them we didn't really know the lyrics to, so we should probably like maybe redo them. <laughs> Do y'all film them? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, they're on my computer. Ooh. So maybe yeah. we'll get a peek at some of those? I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. All right, well, let's talk about what you're reading. 
I am still reading Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. I am slowly coming along with it. Any idea of where you are? No, I've been focused on doing the pumpkin spice sauce. Yeah, because we have that deadline to be able to do the photo shoots. So. Yes. Well, I am still reading the Dresden Files series by Jim Butcher. So I finished rereading Blood Rites and Dead Beat. And now I'm about to start Proven Guilty, but... I had already read Deadbeat, because remember I talked about last week, I couldn't remember if I had actually read Deadbeat or if it was... I don't remember. Yeah. So, but I don't think I've read Proven Guilty, because I remember Deadbeat, but I've just started Proven Guilty, so I'm, I'm not sure if I've read it yet. Or if this is a reread or if I, or is this the first read of it. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and that's it. I'm just reading fiction to escape from everything. All right, we have lots of TV, so why don't you start? Um, we finished rewatching Star Trek: The Next Generation. Yes, and so now we're rewatching. We're still rewatching. We finished rewatching season two of Star Trek: Deep Space Nine. Oh, that's right, we did. I need to change that. Um, so all good things, mm -hmm. which could also be called Jean Luc in his pajamas, mm -hmm. and Deep Space Nine. The Jim Hadar. Yep. So, um, so now we'll watch like half a season of DS9 and then start with Voyager as well, right? Yes. Yeah, and then watch them chronologically. Okay, you and I are still watching season one of The Blacklist, and I mean, like, is the season ever going to end? I don't know how many. Does it ever end? I don't know how many episodes there are. Um, I got a text, and so. I'm trying not to look at the picture because I really want to look at it. Um, I'm going to IMDb to look at the blacklist. Um, well, I can't talk about the next things. What is it? What's the next thing? Motive. Okay. Well, the hubs and I are watching that, and we have one episode left of season three, and then season four has not started airing yet. Mm. So we will be caught up on that. Billy Boyd was on it. Yes. We have one, two, we have four episodes left in season one of the Blacklist because oh. we we watched Milton Bobbitt yesterday. Okay. So I bet you and I will have time to watch uh, Pavlo Pavlovich Brothers and The Kingmaker today. Okay. If I can get the the podcast edited qu quickly enough. Okay. So we might try that. Um, and then, and then I don't know what the Hubs and I are going to watch next after we finish Motive. I have to look at my list again. Um, so then I'm watching Supernatural. I finished watching season six, and now I'm watching season seven. OMG, Dean had Castiel wipe Lisa and Ben's memories of him. They don't know who he is anymore. Who's Lisa and Ben? He, it's the the um, the lady he lived with for the year that Dean was supposedly in hell, but he wasn't in hell that whole time. Um, she was an old girlfriend, and they settled down and had family life. But then Sam came back, and Dean left to go chase the demons and everything with him. And then Lisa and, and Ben got attacked. And Who's Ben? The son. Lisa's son. Okay. And anyway, long story short, Lisa was very upset. Ben was very upset. And then Castiel wiped their minds. In the hospital. And they don't know who he is anymore. Okay. It's very sad. Very, very sad. You know, I just thought of another yummy. What? I got a new desk. Yes, you did. It's beautiful. We built it last night. Yes, happy birthday to me. That's right. I feel much more organized now. Because I was just working... Because you can put your legs under your desk. I can. I can actually fit my legs under my desk because what I was doing is I was using two TV trays as a desk. And you can't put your legs under those when they are turned sideways. So I kept bumping my knees. My knees and shins were covered in bruises. So I got a new desk. And I love it. So that was another yummy from Ikea. Happy birthday to Maris. Yes. But then we had cupcakes. Yes. And you knit on pumpkin spice most of the time while Daddy and I were building it. Yes. Yes. And then we watched something that I'll talk about in a few minutes. 
Um, NCIS, we're watching season 13 as it airs. So Bishop got mad at McGee for spoiling her anniversary surprise. They had like a fight. But then we found out that Tony might be related to Jack the Ripper. Um, we're watching NCIS New Orleans season two, The Hubs and I are. Why don't you take the next couple? Um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We're watching season three as it airs. Fitz got Simmons back. Yay. 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 Can they have their dinner date now? Yes. Mm -hmm. I just need them to be happy, please. They need to be happy together. Love together. I need them to be happy. We're going to watch another episode tonight. Yes. Yes. So maybe Hopefully they'll be happy. Maybe they went on their dinner date. Oh. Oh, that'd be so sweet. Oh. Cool. Okay. okay, what else? Uh, we're watching season 11 of Criminal Minds as it airs. Yeah. So the new lady is around still. Mm -hmm. But not billed as a main member of the cast. Yeah, she's not in the credits yet. I mean, like in the main opener credits. Yeah. Um, we're watching season of 11 of Bones, and Booth is safe, thank goodness. And Bones is going back to the Jeffersonian. Yeah. I'm still confused as to why Booth was involved with that. Because he was trying to save his brother. Oh, And okay. his brother got killed yeah. and burned up in the van. Okay. Yeah, does that make sense now? Yes. Good, good. Um, so now I wonder if Bones will go back full-time with the... FBI, because right now he was just like a contract. Booth. I'm sorry. What did I say? Bones. I'm sorry. Booth. We'll go back to work. They both start with B-O. I know. They don't have B-O, though. That's not very nice. Okay. Um, I wonder if he'll go back to the FBI full time or not. We shall see. Um, Haven, the second half of season five, which we know is the final season. So there's 13 episodes. Um, and there was two episodes on this past week that we watched, so that brings us down to 11 episodes left. Um, yeah. But I think they knew when they were filming that it was going to be the end, so yeah. hopefully they tied it all up in a bow. More, There are more WWE superstars. There are. So, like, like, a, a, like, where did they get all the WWE superstars? Well, because remember, this is this is aired on the Sci Fi Network. And yes, and why is WWE on the Sci Fi Network? I don't know. We could have this discussion for hours. I have no clue. It makes absolutely no sense at all. As well as some of the reality shows, nothing to do with science fiction. Yeah. Sharknado. I can understand. <laughs> I haven't watched it, but I can understand Sharknado. But. WWE wrestling? Seriously? Mama, no one can understand Sharknado. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's, it's fiction, <laughs> science fiction. I mean... Don't you just hate it when sharks fall from the sky? I know. I know. I have avoided watching that and hopefully I will continue to avoid watching it. Um, continuum, the series finale. Did they tie things up? They did tie things up. Did they tie all the things up? Pretty much. So Kira made it back to the future, but the whole timeline had changed for the better because of what she had done and what Alex, Alec had done and everything. And so her son was there, but he was a different son because he wasn't raised in the environment of her original future. So she made it back, but it wasn't what she expected. Okay. And that's how they kind of tied it up. Um, we're watching the final series of Downton Abbey. So, um, why can't I think of his name? Who? Carson. Carson and Mrs. Carson are back. Hughes. Yes, because they're going to keep calling her Mrs. Hughes. Um, and, oh, Anna, Anna. Yes. The baby. I'm so excited. Watching season five of Once Upon a Time with the Hubs. How is it? I don't remember really what happened. See, I blank it out. I'm like, hmm. I watch it, but I just kind of don't retain a memory of it. 
oh, um, Arthur apparently is bad, King Arthur. Oh. Yeah. And David was made a knight of the round table, like the number one knight of the round table. He got the special chair that Lancelot used to sit in. But what does Lancelot think of that? Well, Lancelot was supposedly dead, but he's not. Guess what? He's alive. Okay. Okay. See, I told you I don't remember what happens in the show. Uh, Big Vega Theory season nine. Sheldon is not dealing well with Penny and Leonard being married and wanting to move across the hall together. He reverted back to 2003 and had a flip phone. Okay. Yeah. Poor Sheldon. All right, you're up next. Uh, we're watching season eight of Castle as it airs. I love Alexis and working yes. in the PI business. Yes. That's fabulous. And, and, and... Oh, names are escaping me today. Castle? No. Beckett? Beckett needs to get her, get her stuff dealt with. Come on. Get it dealt with. Okay. And, and Espo and... Ryan. Ryan are going to take the sergeant's exam. Mm -hmm. I thought a detective was above a sergeant. Although, I don't know anything about... Um, Police hierarchy. I don't. I don't really either. I mean, I know a captain is higher. Yeah, but is she? Still, I would assume that. But does she still have detective in her title? Is she like captain detective or detective I think, captain? I think she's just captain. So what are they right now? Are they just detective? I think so. So would they be detective sergeant? Like like on Murdoch Mysteries, it's like chief inspector. Well, I don't know. That's Canadian. Or constable third class or first class or whatever. I don't know. That's Canadian. I don't know either. Um, Hubs and I are watching, watching season seven of NCIS LA. Yep. There was lots of explosions on the show last night. And now Murdoch Mysteries season nine. Do you know who the guest star this week was? Oh, say it louder. I can't hear you. Captain Kirk. That's right. William Shatner playing Mark Twain. Yes. Is he going to be back? Um, I don't know. I, they, I mean, they brought back people, um, some of the other characters, um, I can't think now, right now, who, some scientists. Hmm. So they, I mean, they feasibly could. They saved his life. Mm -hmm. So, and then finally, Doctor Who, episode four of series nine, Before the Flood. We have Beethoven and the Bootstrap Paradox. Did you Google it like he said to? Yes. And what did you learn? It's also called the Casual Loop, and which kind of makes kind of makes more sense than the name Bootstrap. It's when a future event is caused by a past event, and a past event causes a future event. So there's no discernible way to find out where one starts and the other begins. Very good, Damaris. I'm glad that that the doctor is educating you. No, Wikipedia educated oh. me. He it's, just confused me. It's like which comes first, the chicken or the egg. Kind of. Yeah. Uh, loved the electric guitar in the theme song. That was fan freaking fantastic. Loved it. Um, and O'Donnell knew about Martha and Amy and the Doctor's history on Earth, but then she squeezed about the TARDIS being bigger on the inside. That was very cute. Oh, we did find out, we asked our friend Heather, who is studying sign language, uh, that it is BSL that they were using in what was last week's episode. I don't know. I can't remember the name of it. I don't know. Uh, um, was it like below this something? I don't remember. I can't remember names. Y'all know me. Um, and then the TARDIS tries to stop the doctor from saving Clara. And then we have the ripple effect that maybe it means that the universe will be ruled by cats or something. Meow. That already happened in ancient Egypt, right? The cats were in charge. Yes. Yes. And I loved when he plugged his sunglasses into the console. That was fabulous. And we leave you with the same question from the beginning of the episode. Who composed Beethoven's fifth? Next week's episode is episode five, The Girl Who Died. And it's got the, a guest star. I can't think what her name is. Maisie Williams. Yeah, but she's from Game of Thrones. Yes. Yes. So, 
Is she the girl that died? Is Clara the girl who died? Is Clara staying the entire series? Or are they sending her out early? Who will be the new companion? Coming soon on a TV near to you. That was everything. We watched a lot of TV this week. Yes. Because we were we're both just like knitting like mad. Um, so, yeah. Um, well, I guess we're ready to move on to the next segment then. Okay, here we go. And now we're going to talk about our artistic autumnal cow. That's right. So this started on the 1st of September and runs through the 30th of November. It's for any project you knit, crochet, weave, or spin. You can convince us it's related to autumn. You can convince us it's related to autumn by its color, colorway name, its purpose, its pattern name, design element, or if you can't think of anything, you made it in the autumn. That you knitted it using an autumn project bag? Yes. Or you use, no, no, I don't know. That you used autumnal stitch markers, like candy corn? Yeah. Come on, we're, we're very flexible. You just have to convince us. Um, but you could not use pre-existing whips. Yes. You have to start it September 1st or later. And But you can double dip in other cows. That's totally fine. Like... Let me think, what kind of cows are going on right now? Well, the Knit Girls have their um, Halloween cow. I can't remember what it's called. Craft Along. Because it doesn't have to be just one of the Ravelry 4. Mm -hmm. So it can be like baking or sewing or whatever. Okay. So there's that one. I'm not sure what other cows are going on right now. It's October. It's October is going on. Mm -hmm. Um... There's always Operation Sock Drawer, Operation Sweater Chest. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's there's stuff that you can enter them in, so please do feel free to double dip. We have prizes. They're up on the screen right now. We'd like to say a big thank you to our sponsors. We love you very much. Um, if you want to know all the details about the prizes, just go to the show notes and you can read them all there. Um, every project you finish and post counts as one entry into the cow. If you have multiple projects don't post them all into one post so say you had finished three pairs of socks don't post all three pairs of socks in one post do a separate post for each pair of socks because we use the numbers of the posts to draw for the prizes mm -hmm. um you have to be a member of our ravelry group and we'll lock the thread the morning of the first of december and draw winners on the next podcast following that so, Mayor, I think that's everything. Mm -hmm. So, why don't you give a shout out to everyone who finished projects this week? Okay. A1 Darwin, Amy Osaurus, Abby Inn, A Bingham, Bindi J, Britter the Knitter, C Howard 06, Crochet Chick 31, DG White times 7, DP Temple, Jammin to Knit, Katie Did What 1, Knit Princess 83 times 2, Katie Jane 82 times 2, Little Angel SG 2 times 4, Elle McCall, Looney Hiker, Mother Z times 2, Mystery Sewer times 2, Orkin Vander times 7, Phoenix Fire times 2, Piper's Mom times 2, Rainbow Ange times 2, Ramona Firehorse no, no, times 3. Oh, Rainbow, Rainbow Ange, Ange times 3. Rainbow Ange times 3. Ramona Firehorse times three. Rebecca nope. times two. Times two. <laughs> Rebecca Z twenty two times two. Saratoga knitting times two. Smushy Bear times two. And the Sticky Stitch times two. Great job, y'all. There was lots of people with twos and threes, and you were trying to read it, and and it was shifting a little bit. So, so great job, everybody. Um, everybody's been really busy. Um, so we're tomorrow. We'll be halfway through the cow, right? Because September, October, November. Yeah. So tomorrow I'll be halfway through, so you still have a good six plus weeks to get your stuff done, so go for it. All right, well, let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Ask the Geeky Girls, the part of our show where you ask us things and we answer them. That's right. So the week, this week's question is for me. Mm -hmm. So why don't you ask it? This week's question comes from Jen, who is Tiny Dancer Knits from Texas. For you. I live in Texas, and I love it here, but Texas is not the ideal state for fiber crafts. I am determined to let nothing stop me from knitting my heart out, and so far I love knitting everything, from sweaters to socks to hats and mitts, stuffed animals and dishcloths, and everything in between. If you were still living in Texas, would that change the way you knit or what you knit? 
Okay, so I didn't learn to knit socks until about a year before we left Texas to move over here. Prior to that, my knitting primarily centered around baby blankets, hats, afghans, afghans, a few. You, you made lots of afghans. I did using those ginormous, huge mm. needles, uh, holding like three or four strands of yarn together at once. Mm. Yeah. I think everybody in our family got one for one Christmas or something. Um, I did some stuffed animals, a few. I did that little kitty for Lola and I did some of the cephalopods. Mm -hmm. uh, I did my um, Sarah Jane, my mm -hmm. podcast monster. Uh, po Sarah, Sarah Jane, the podcast. I can't remember, the zom uh, something, zombie, something. It's got lots of my badges on it. Um, I did some, I did quite a few fingerless mitts mm -hmm. before we left. Um, but then like about a year before we left, I, I learned how to knit socks, became kind of obsessed with them. I also knit my first sweater before we left Texas. It was a short sleeve cardigan. Um, it's the one that I wore in the episode where we interviewed Rachel Heron because it mm -hmm. came from one of her books. Um, if we were still living there now and I have, I had the skills that I currently have living here, I'd probably knit lots of socks still, even though they, you can't wear them quite a lot of the year. I've probably quite a few hats. I don't know if I would knit the heavier sweaters, like my Miranda or like the Fairchild that I'm going to knit in November. Um... Just because there's just, I mean, you get to wear it maybe once a year. Um, so probably socks, mitts, hats. I'm kind of over baby blankets, although we are knitting these two right now. Mm. But then another friend saw, so I posted a picture on Instagram this week about the um, finishing the next row in the Doctor Who blanket. And she was like, oh, I should, when I have a baby, I should get you to make me one. And I was like, I'm actually over knitting baby blankets. These ones are an exception because, because of the circumstances. I said, but I can knit you a very nice Doctor Who inspired car baby cardigan and hat. So, um, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I, like, yeah, I don't know. That's a hard, it's a hard question because... I learned so much be after we got here knitting mm -hmm. wise. I don't know. Probably lots of socks still. That's a good question. So if you live someplace where it is warm, hot, more of the year than it is cold, cold um the hubs posted a picture this morning about a crisp autumn morning and then in the comments some i don't know they were talking and then something was said about you know scotland's heat wave was it got up into like the the lower 70s fahrenheit this summer so um that's a nice autumn day in texas when it's in the the low 70s um so, yeah, if you live someplace where it's hot more often than cold, does that affect what you knit or do you just knit what you want regardless of if it's feasible to use more than just once a year? Hmm. Does, does that make sense? Hmm. So, uh, go to the episode thread on Ravelry and tell us because um, you might have some suggestions. Like, my Mia tank, I can wear... I could have knit that and worn that in Texas because it's a tank, but I can wear it over here with long sleeve tea under it for more of the year. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That, that was not a very good answer. Socks. Hats. Socks. Hats. So thank you, Jen, for the question. Mayor, if somebody else has a question that I might, might you and I might feasibly try to answer, what should they do? Go to the, our Ask the Kiki Girls thread in our Ravelry group and post it. That's right. All right. Well, I think we are ready to move on to the next segment. What is the middle of it? I, I don't know. Some kind of like... 
it feels kind of like a small like um pin cushion type thing you know oh. that you could stick stuff in so we're at the end of the show and we're discussing alpaca pom-pom on my head it's so squishy <laughs> squishy mm -hmm. this is my barley hat by tin can knits in case you want to know in the rainbow heirloom sweater in the perfect pink colorway because perfect pink so i like the pom-pom so much but you can't see it like when i wear it like this unless i'm like so it's more fun to wear it like this Mm -hmm. So, yes, we're at the end of the show. Oh, sorry. I, I was just talking about my, my pom-pom. I know you were. Yeah. Well, um, do we have any announcements? I'm a legal adult. What is that song about legal something? I don't know. Legal, legal? No. <laughs> about being an illegal alien. Englishman in New York. Yeah, that one. How's it go? I'm an alien. I'm a legal alien. alien. I'm an Englishman. Englishman in New York. Yes. Yes. That's what I was trying to think of. Um, announcements. <laughs> that doesn't have any reference to my age whatsoever. No, but it made me think of it. Okay, so. Announcements. We don't have any announcements this week. I don't think out of it. Nor Next week we will because our recording schedule will change because of the retreat. Mm-hmm. So next week episode is normal, and then we'll let you know about the other ones. Yep. Yes, um, and then just our normal stuff. We're Amazon and Amazon.co.uk, Amazon.com and Amazon.co.uk affiliates. So if you're gonna shop, would you please click through our website to get to them? Because Amazon gives us a little money back, doesn't cost you anything extra, and it's a great way to support the podcast. Yeah. All right, Mayor, why don't you tell them where to find us online? You can find us at geekygirlsknit.com. There are links to everywhere else we are online. YouTube, iTunes, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. That's right. Well, with that, we hope that you have a pom-pom-tastic week. Mm -hmm. Rest of your week. Pom-poms for the win. There were four pom-poms in this week's episode. Pom-poms mm -hmm. are awesome. Yes. Uh, happy knitting, and we'll be back with you next week. Yep. Hopefully you, your allergies will go away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there'll be lots of knitting. We won't still be able to show you the Pump and Spice socks. But soon. Alright, we're going to say goodbye. Happy knitting. Bye. Alexander Hamilton was an Energizer Bunny. What? <laughs> How in the world does the Energizer Bunny have anything to do with Hamilton? He's an Energizer Bunny. Why? <laughs> At the end of Act 1, the song is non-stop, and so it's covering several years, and he's like literally writing non-stop. He wrote 51 essays for the Federalist Papers, so like, man... The man is non-stop. And so is Energizer Bunny actually in the show? Or did no, you just say that? I just said that. Oh. But he is like an Energizer Bunny. So, because the show is hip-hop. Yes. He needs to take a break. <laughs> That's another one of the songs. Um, and this is a totally different subject. The... Um, Lay Miz things that I posted on her Facebook wall. Mm -hmm. Did y'all see these? Can you tell them about them in case um, they... They're Lay Miz birthday cards. Ridiculous Lay Miz birthday cards. Like, what was it about? Hope your birthday is 24605. Oh, fun! He didn't look like he was having much fun. Jean Valjean. Mm -mm. And there was one awful one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember how, what it was. How it was Andros. He, he's been killed, he, so he's hanging upside down out of the top of the cafe. It says, what's hanging? <laughs> I found, like, these small ones uh, just that were, like, one or two of them. And then I found, like, this whole thing, and I was like, well, I'll just put the whole thing because she'll she'll laugh at some of them. And then I didn't realize, and I was like, oh, whoops. <laughs> he's dead. He's dead. How's it hanging? I like the grunt hair one. I am a gog. I am a gog. It is your birthday at last. 
two, four, six, oh, fun. <laughs> Oops, my pom-pom went crazy.